Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the Mackey co-integration test. As you know, standard co-integration tests should not be used on data with structural breaks. Just a little bit of history. Gregory and Hansen 1996 was the first co-integration test that allowed for a structural break. Then, the Hadami J 2008 test extended it to allow for two breaks. The Mackey co-integration test builds from both of these previous tests and allows for up to five breaks in the level, trend, and regime at unknown locations. Today, we'll cover everything that you need to know to run the test with your data and confidently interpret the results. To follow along, you'll need to have both Gauss and the free add-on TSPDLib installed, plus a non-stationary data set to work with. We're going to start out today by running the Mackey example that comes with TSPDLib and keep it pretty simple. Our working directory is currently set to the Gauss home directory. If you're not sure what your Gauss home directory is, then go ahead and enter the command get Gauss home into the program input output window and Gauss will let you know. Our project folders window to the left shows us the contents of our current working directory and we can see that it's currently set to Gauss home. We can find the example that we're looking for by navigating to Gauss home, packages, TSPD lib, and then finally examples. Go ahead and double click to open the example file. Click the Run button to execute the file, and we can see that the output is reported as expected below. Now that we've ran this example successfully, we're just going to go ahead and take this example file, use it as a template, modify it a little bit, and then we'll use it with our new data file. First, we're going to start out by changing our working directory to the location of the new data file. Then we're going to go ahead and save a copy of the example file in this new folder. As we can see, we have four main sections of this file. The first is pretty simple. It's responsible for loading the TSPD lib library, and that makes the procedures available to Gauss, such as coint under Mackey. This line will never change, so we're just going to leave it alone. The second section actually loads the data. The data needs to be a Gauss matrix or a data frame with at least two time series variables. The variables can be of any frequency, but they have to be consecutive with no missing observations. So at the time of this video, there are only critical values for up to four variables. A date variable doesn't have to be included, but if it is, it's going to make the output a lot more readable, so I'd recommend it. We'll modify this to use our new data set in a second. The third section specifies the actual test settings and input parameters. M is the maximum number of breaks considered. So if we have M equals three, the test will consider a model with one, two, and three breaks. The model setting specifies the elements in the co-integration equation, as well as which elements are allowed to have breaks. If model is set to zero, the level shift is a basic model with a break in the intercept. The level shift plus trend option adds a trend term, but there's still only a break in the level. With model set to two, the regime shift adds a break in the coefficients to the basic level shift. And finally, if model equals three, then all three elements are present and breaks are allowed. Finally, the last section is the call to perform the actual test. Since we'll have to replace the data loading section, let's go ahead and just comment out those lines for now. Now we'll double click on the name of the data file to open it in the data import window. Here we can see a preview of the data set and it gives us a few options to filter the data before we import it. So first let's unselect the variables that we don't want to import. We can click the little checkbox. Unfortunately, whoever made this data set didn't make year a date variable. As we can see, Right now, it's just a standard numeric variable. We want to make it into a date variable so that Gauss can use it properly. When we select the date type, a window is going to pop up and it's going to ask us to specify the date format. The bottom part of this window is going to show all the available options, and there's going to be an example and a description for each. So first, let's filter this so we can only see the options for year. It's going to be a lot easier to search the list if we only have two options. The first format, percent %y, actually matches the data in our year variable. So we're going to just use that. Let's type percent %y in the date format box and then select OK. Now we can select import to load the data. 
Now Gauss has taken us to the data page where we can see a preview of the data. You can double click the name of the symbol in the symbols window if it's not already open. The data looks correct, so we'll go back to the edit page and paste the data loading command that was created for us by the import window into our new file. We just need to change one last thing before we run the file. The original data loading line created a Gauss data frame named data, which was passed into the Cohen under Mackey procedure. Since our new data frame is called rdink, we'll update the name of that input and then run the file. Let's take a closer look at the output here. The header gives us a pretty good summary of the test setup, and you'll see that it matches some of our input parameters. Finally, we have what you've all been waiting for, the Mackey test statistic. You'll see it right below the first line of equal signs. And now how to interpret it. Because it's between the 1 and 5% critical values shown below, we can reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level, as we see on the final line of the report. The final section here shows the break dates. There's going to be M breaks in the report. The locations shown are the most likely locations for these breaks. But the test doesn't tell us if they're actually significant or not. You're going to actually need a separate structural break test like the Bayh and Perron 2003. That pretty much wraps it up. Now you know how to run the Mackey co-integration test and interpret the results. Go ahead and check the description below for some more examples and related materials, or post a comment.